Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to a new video. On the last video, we spoke a lot about queues, about how to push jobs into a queue, how to list the jobs that have failed, all that stuff. And on this lesson, we're going to cover a little bit more about failed jobs. How can we see the failed jobs? Where are they stored? And how can we retry them? So with no further ado, let's jump into the lesson. Before we jump into the lesson, I'm going to ask you to please leave a like on this video subscribe to the channel, check out the newsletter. That really, really, really helps me. And if you think this video was good or any other video on the channel was good content, I would really appreciate if you could share it with some friends on Twitter, maybe, because it really, really, really helps me. But anyway, let's jump into the lesson. All right. So just like in the previous lesson, I have the message sender service here, and it's just sleep for one second to mimic a very slow API, and then it is throwing an exception. So I already seeded the database with a hundred fake messages. So if we go to messages, we have a couple records. What we want to do right now is go here and hit the send API. And okay, so the messages should be queued. If we go into Redis and let me close this, let me refresh it. We see a hundred records. So now we just want to run artisan queue work so we can run php artisan queue work and you can see we got one fail a bunch of failures that's enough now if we go into our database refresh it and go into fail jobs you can see that we now have a couple records here we have the job uid we have the connection and we were using radis we have the queue and we haven't specified a queue so it's fall back into default we have the payload and the payload includes everything that you would see just like on the Redis job. So if we go to Redis and click on the job, for instance, this one, you can see it has some payload. Like I said, you have the class that should be that should be executed. You have the arguments, all that stuff. So it's stored here and you have the exception that was thrown. Um, this is really useful if you want to check logs or something like that. And you also have when the job failed. So we have four jobs that failed. And we can also check the failed jobs. We can run artisan queue failed, and it is going to list the failed jobs. We also have a command called artisan queue retry, and we can pass a job EUID. For instance, I'm going to pick this one. Uh, let me just select this properly. I'm having a hard time. I can say artisan queue retry, and I'm going to remove this exception here because we want to see it succeed. So if I run this, you can see that it worked. So if I go back, and refresh it, you can see that it was removed from the fail jobs table. Now, okay, cool. So we still have some jobs here. How can we retry all of them? Well, if you want to retry in a specific queue, you can pass it as an argument to this method, but you can also pass all. So if I run artisan queue retry all, it is going to retry all jobs. Now, one interesting thing is that we can also specify how many times we want to try a job. So for instance, Let's process all the jobs that we have on the queue and let's remove this delay just so it's a little bit faster. So let me go here. I'm going to comment this, rerun artisan queue work, and one of them failed. That's interesting. Let's see what happened. Mm, max attempt. Okay, so this is what we're going to talk about. Let me delete this one. Let's stop this. All right, cool. So I made a, a small change. Uh, we're now getting one single message, and that's how we can test things. The message sender is throwing an exception once again. We don't have anything on Redis. We don't have anything on the fail jobs table. So let's hit that API. We should now have something on Redis. Let's refresh it. There we go. And I'm going to run a different command. I'm going to say artisan queue work, and I'm going to say I want to try a job three times. So let's run it. Okay, fail, fail, fail. And you can see that we got two failures with this yellow warning. And then we got one failure with this red warning. And if we go to SQL Ace, we can see the failed job. And we can retry it. We can re-add it to the queue. So let me say artisan queue retry all. It's back into the queue. Fail. Fail, fail. So we're instructing Laravel to go, hey, try this job once. If it doesn't work, try it again. If it doesn't work, try it again. And then if nothing works, 
just send it to the failed jobs table. So I'm going to stop this. I'm going to clear this table. And let's redo this with a small change. Now, you saw that I specify this on the CLI command, but there's another way to do this. You can add this to the job as well. You can go here and you can add a property called tries. So you can say, uh, let's try five times. And let's do the same thing. Let's add it to the queue and now let's process it. And I'm not going to add the tries option, the tries flag. Let's try it. Fail, 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 fail. And then the right fail. So you can have the tries option both in the queue level, in the queue worker level, as well as in the job level. What do you want to do? Well, it depends. Sometimes you want to have some jobs being retried a couple more times. Sometimes you want jobs to have different timeouts. And we're not going to go into timeouts, but you can also specify different types, different um, levels of timeouts on the job itself. This is all in the documentation. But this is pretty much how you handle failure. Now, another really cool thing about Laravel is you can add a method called, let's, um, it's called fail, and it expects a throwable. So we can say throwable. And for now, we're only going to dump and die. So do we have something in the queue? I don't think so. Let's, yeah, we have a fair job. Let's remove it and redo what we were doing. So let's refresh it. Whoops, unclose line. Oh. I see it. So my bad guys, you see how this happens to everyone. Okay. Let's retry it. Okay. It's being added to the queue. Let's run the queue. Failed, failed, failed. And you can see that on the actual failure, when it sends the job into the fail job table, we can run something. So maybe you want to alert someone, maybe you want to send a message on Slack. Maybe you want to do some action on your application, but you can definitely handle fail jobs. So when you see the yellow fail, it's not actual. It's not. It's not an actual failure. Uh, I mean, it is a failure, but it's going to be retried. It really fails when Laravel sends the job to the fail job table. It's like, hey, we tried processing that. We tried doing this as many times as you wanted. It did not work out. So here you go. This is what happened. And if you want to retry it, feel free to. But that's pretty much how retrying works in Laravel. All right, I think that was quite a lot. Um, I hope you managed to understand how to deal with fail jobs in Laravel. Laravel is really, really robust. So it provides you everything that you need to manage those jobs in a very organized way. And in the next lesson, we're going to take a look at Horizon, which is a first party package by Laravel. And man, it, it should be paid. Uh, the competitors in other ecosystems uh, packages that provide the same functionality are paid, and it's such a blast that Horizon isn't. I mean, you guys are going to see it, and you're going to agree with me that Horizon should be paid softer. But thankfully, we get it for free. So see you in the next lesson. Like I said, please leave a like. Please subscribe. That really, really helps me. And if you could share this video with your friends, I'd really appreciate it. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.